ladies and gentlemen, how you doing? Uh, I had a bad weekend. I hope your weekend was better than mine. Mine was bad because I couldn't get down there to training camp. This was the one weekend that I was scheduled not to go down there. And this weekend, they had pads on, they had spirited practice and all that kind of stuff, and I missed it all. However, I did do follow Cowboy Beat Riders on Twitter and on Instagram, so I got to see probably a little bit more than I would have seen if I was down there because, you know, I'm filming, and then I got to come home and look at the footage and see if we'll see what I got and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, so it, 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 it ended up working out. The only bad thing is I missed, I, I missed meeting uh, uh, Omar Epps. I've been trying to run into Omar Epps in this town forever. Well, I, I barely go into Hollywood anyway, but still, <laughs> I've been trying to run into Omar Epps forever because I know he's a dedicated cowboy fan and I want to dap him up. Um, first, I'm going to start with, with, with something that is probably like 95 to 96 percent of us is annoyed by, but it's about to hit us in the face because of, because of the, what's going on is this anthem stuff. Just don't touch it. That there's nothing, there's, there's been argument for a year and there's been no traction on any side. So it's obvious what that thing is doing. Let's just leave it alone. Let's don't touch it. Let's, let's, let's just hope it just disappears. That's what I hope. It just goes away. Um, the uh, thoughts on Dez, same way. I just want the Dez stuff to go away. Both of these two, they're... It's like there is noise, you know, the Dez talking and tweeting and saying stuff or whatever, the anthem stuff. It's just noise that means absolutely nothing. So, all right, um, Dak, that means something. A lot of you guys were like, were like, um, how can I say I'm all in on Dak, but then say that uh, I'm not ready to give him a contract? Guys, some of you guys, you don't understand what that second contract was, it is. That second contract is absolutely huge for a quarterback because they're going to get paid tremendously. And the pay has to be big enough to offset all the losses on your team. And Dak is not there yet. I love Dak. I'm like excited to see Dak. But he's not to the point where you want to give him a whole bunch of million, millions and millions of dollars that, that will deprive the rest of your team just because you like him or whatever. He's got to prove some stuff. You, you know what I'm saying? It, at least get to the level that Tony Romo was before we gave him, him that money. Because again, as I said, I didn't want to give Tony Romo all that money at that time. And, and you see it. I don't know what the right move was, but that wasn't the right move because we didn't get any, any championships and we didn't, <laughs> and we still pay Tony Romo. So it obviously didn't work. So I don't want to run into that same thing with Dak and end up giving him a whole lot of money and it don't work. You, you, you know what I'm saying? So it's, it's, a, it's a very tough season for him. He's going to have to do extremely well. He's going to have to do extremely well. I believe in him. I think that with our running game and our offensive line and all that kind of stuff going, Dak is damn near perfect. Damn near perfect. You want to, you want to hold last year against Dak but you got a, a running back that really wasn't ever there. You can look at the De Denver game early in the season, and his head wasn't in it. His head wasn't in the game, game at the beginning of the season, and he literally physically wasn't there in the second half of the season. So, I mean, you didn't have your, your number one weapon on offense. Uh, now we're hearing the stuff about Dez being in his ear and, to some extent, Witten being in his ear. You lose your offensive line, your, your biggest and most important uh, a member of your offensive line that reared his ugly face by getting you sacked eight times in the game. So you lost a whole lot. So it's hard for me to say, Dak, you regress when all of that happened to our team and our offense last year. And, and then you sprinkle play calling on the top of that <laughs> as well. So you had a lot of offensive issues last year. Um, so this year, I hope we can clean up all the other stuff because I still feel like when the thing, when the machine is running, Dak is doing great. I know you guys wanted to throw back shoulder fades or whatever, but if we don't have to throw a back shoulder fade, why throw a back shoulder fade? Uh, <laughs> uh, the next is Zeke. Um, Zeke is, Zeke is, his, his mind is there, uh, and I, I hope he makes the whole entire, like I was yelling at him, I hope he punishes the entire league and shows exactly the, the, the character he has potential to be. Um, next is Rico. Rico, I'm not getting hype on Rico this year. 
not 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 this much. <laughs> I refuse to do it. But he's look he's he is looking good out there. Um, his routes are still they lumber. You know he rounds them off sometimes. He he claims he's very similar to Gronk. What in that style? But we'll, we'll see when you put up production like Gronk. But uh, he looks bigger. He looks like he gained like maybe maybe 25, 20, 25 pounds or something like that. He 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 he's noticeably bigger. Uh, so maybe that helps with the block in. Then he got he got pulled out of practice yesterday for a mental mistake. So I I just don't know. I just refuse. We're gonna see some some plays that's gonna go wow with Rico. But I refuse to get hype on Rico this year until some actual production happens. Um, Blake Jarwin is doing well at tight end as well though. And to be honest, on offense. The tight end position worries me more than wide receivers. I kind of like the wide receivers, to be honest. I mean, they're out there. They're working hard. Um, Cole Beasley is the star. He's, the, he's, the, he's going to be our Julian Edelman. He's the guy that you're going to go to all the time. And I guess it's – I was thinking about this before with our offense. The defenses knew what Dez wanted to do and knew what Dez does. And the defenses knew what – Witten only could do because Witten couldn't do, but a, a few, he finds those spots. He catches the ball and he gets, you know, maybe a yard or two and then that's it. So they knew what those two guys were doing. So they could double Beasley and do all that kind of stuff and, and, and cover the areas that they knew these guys were. That was that led to the predictability of our offense, too, because we had two players that were highly predictable with, with Witten and, and Dez. Now we can send those players anywhere. We can send. There's, I mean, if you have Lance <laughs> Lance Lenore, who's playing well, by the way, you know, you can put him anywhere. You can put Beasley anywhere. You, I mean, it, the the ability to do different things is with, is with these wide receivers. Uh, so I'm I'm very interested in seeing them in live action. And something I tell people all the time: the wide receiver in position and the running back position. All of you know that uh, it's all about production. And you can get people that, that produce all day. You can find people everywhere that can produce. The only difference is when you get an elite one. Like in the running back case, an elite one is, is Gurley, uh, Bell, Zeke. They're different. Uh, wide receiver, an elite one is like uh, uh, Julio. You know what I'm saying? ODB. P people like that who, who are just on another level. Those are the only one wide receivers that, oh, my God, but you can't. You can't, you can't distinguish the number 20 wide receiver in the league from the number 35 wide receiver in the league. It's just like, they're, just, they're like comparable. Um, Randy Gregory, I see him out there. Uh, he's, he's very engaged. He looks bigger, stronger, or, what, or whatever. So I'm very, I'm going to keep an eye on that situation. I still had not seen him in, in pads, but uh, it's good to see Randy Gregory. You know me, I'm a, I'm a, I have 94 up there. I'm a, I'm a Randy Gregory fan, so I'm, I'm, I'm hoping for the best for him. Um, big time. I did not know Darius Jackson was back. I meant to say this in my last video. I was so happy. And I bl you know who I, I blame Nate in my Madden League because he's the one who, who keeps me updated on our favorite uh, Cowboy players. And he didn't tell me that, that, uh, that we had Darius Jackson back. But welcome back, Darius Jackson. Uh, hope you make at least the practice squad. But we have Bo now. Uh, so it's going to be tough. Um, and Bo is big. Bo is a big guy, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing him in some preseason action and seeing what he can do on the, on the, on the um, professional le level. Um, like I said, all receivers work, working hard. Cole Beasley is just, he's just owning everybody out there. He, I, I think they said he, he broke Cheeto's ankle so bad it was ridiculous. Um, so Gallup, all the guys. The only thing that, that, uh, that I hate is Cedric, um, Cedric Wilson, Torres Labrum, I think. So I'm really worried about him because if he has, if he's out just a little bit longer, then he's not going to have a chance to make this team at all. I mean, his chances were very thin. You know, he's my boy. Uh, but if he's injured during training camp, then he has no, no way to, to make this team, which is, which, which is sad to me. Um, the, uh, and the last thing about the wide receiver, Switzer is not missing. I know a lot of people were saying Switzer, 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 Switzer is not missed. I, 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 there, there's so many wide receivers that can be used in different ways and slot guys or whatever. And on the flip side of that, Ward is like an integral piece of our defensive tackle rotation right now. And, I, I, and that's the one position on defense, like, like tight end on offense I'm worried about. 
uh, uh, the defensive tackle on defense I'm worried about because that is not like running back and wide receiver where production you can find production anywhere no you you gotta <laughs> you gotta put some dogs there in the middle and they gotta know what they're doing as far as with your defensive scheme because they will you know set your entire back up for for victory or for fail um uh, I need to see more Van Der Esch. I hadn't seen much Van Der Esch. and the corners Byron Jones Byron Jones looks good at corner I guess you know all of us that when we got our Madden and we put Byron Jones took him off safety and put him at corner because of his attributes I guess we were smart I guess we were smart. You know, we all did that. We all did that. But uh, he's made, I think, a couple of interceptions out, out there. So he's doing well uh, as well. So uh, I, I'll be back. I know to, they have today off, but I'll be down there again tomorrow. Me and my dad, I've got to go pick him up, up from the airport. So he's going to be my assistant. Uh, and we're going to have some fun. And I think I'm going to have him driving home. And we can talk through. I can, I can come live here on YouTube on my way home. And I can manage the show and all that kind of stuff. And we can talk through what, what has happened. All right, guys. Long video. But hey, this is training camp. Can't help it. I'll let you. Peace.